Okay. Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm here from Daisy Farm Crafts, and today I have my daughter with me Hi. because, and this is Hannah, my oldest. Um, I talk about her a lot. <laughs> the whole reason why we started crocheting blankets. So, anyway, today is we want to talk about her beautiful diamond. Um, what do we call it? Diamond berry stitch. Yes, blanket. the diamond berry stitch blanket. It's made with Peyton's wool roving in pale blush. Pale blush. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just want to talk a little bit about the math behind this because it's taken us, her, she's the math brain, uh, took me to, in order for her to explain it to me and how we can offer you ways to make this blanket bigger because I know not everybody's going to want to make this crib blanket size right now as it is if you want to hold that over there yeah it's yeah, 32 it's, inches it's about 32 inches across so okay it's, it's fairly small okay so go ahead and explain for sure so it's basically worked in multiples of 16 um so we figured out that um I worked five one one two three four five five diamonds across with four diamonds in between one two three four and um we figured out the easiest way to kind of calculate what your base chain should be is to just multiply the number of diamonds that you want in your in your longest row and multiply that by 16. so for this blanket um five times 16 is 80. so my base chain was 80. 80 no and you don't need to chain one and turn it is just 80. It is just 80. Yeah. So I think Trust the way us. that the, the way that the <laughs> math works out is that it with with the berries and the single crochets on the end, it turns out to be 79 stitches. Yes. And then our plus one makes it 80. Yeah. It does because when you do it, it just dawned on me. We finally figured it out with by just mapping it out. It's because we have a section, like say we'll take the section of four. Like there's 16 chains to this first berry. Then there's 16 over here to this one, 16 to this one, 16 to this one, but only 15 to the end because we don't want a berry sitting on the end. Right. Yeah. So that's where we get our number why you don't have to chain one and turn because that number, I guess multiplying it by 16 yeah. magically takes one off and adds in your chain one because at the end ends with 15 across. Right. We've done it. So um, if you want, so what we're saying in the blog post, if it's unclear, the only way you can make this wider is by using, you can only increase it in odd numbers. So we have five is our biggest row. If the next increase would be seven. And so you'd multiply 16 times seven, which is 112. Yeah. And we're estimating based on how wide this blanket is, is that um, seven across would be, oh, what did we estimate for that? Uh, I think it would be about 40 inches. 40 inches wide. Yeah. And then if you did nine diamonds across, we're estimating that it would be... Somewhere between like 50 and 55 inches, I guess. Wide. Maybe, maybe yeah, 60. Maybe and of course, 60. that all depends on your personal gauge, what size hook you use. Um, my best suggestion is that you'd work a practice swatch and maybe measure how wide you personally do, like maybe do 32, you know, 16 times, well, three, do 16 times three mm -hmm. as your practice swatch, measure it out 48. Uh -huh. and then see, see if that equals for you. But this is really, I feel like this is a pretty good size and we put it on that picture that you see on my couch looked pretty good I just felt like it just needed to be a little bit longer if it really was going to be a throw yeah. we're using this as she's going to give this for more like a, a fashionable crib blanket so one more thing that I just wanted to show um was for the the rows that do have the five um it's still in multiples of 16 but since for the ones that are closer to the end um this the the first berry is on the eighth stitch so I did seven single yeah. crochet, and then on the eighth stitch is the berry. And then I did 15 single crochet, and the 16th stitch is the berry. And then, and then the rest of these all have 15, and then the 16th is the berry, until you get to the end, and then again, it's just seven all the way to the end. 
Yeah. Um, so it's because the eighth stitch and half. would be a berry, and you don't want that because that's the end of the blanket, and we're not doing that. Yeah. You, know, you would and start so, over. So right. that's why you're one less over here. Or, yeah. And it then works when out. You, I mean, you still have seven, whatever. Yeah, and then when you get down to the the row of, of four diamonds, um, it's just even more straightforward. Again, just the fifteen, and then the sixteenth stitch is your berry. 15 and the 16th stitch and then once you once you establish the first um, berry like the top of the diamond or the bottom of the diamond um, then it's pretty easy to just eyeball it as you go as you're crocheting you know that when you're working this next row you just want to place another berry right before and right after that other stitch to make a diamond and, and there's then, one single crochet in between and then there's a sing always a single crochet in between each berry yeah. Um, and then there's also a row of single crochet in between every row of berries, just because the berries only show up on one side. Yeah. So you'll have to. So, so basically, a good way to remember is whenever you're whenever you're crocheting and the berries are toward you, it just means that you're doing your row of single crochet, and whenever they're away from you, it means you need to pay attention because you need to put berries on that row. So. So that's how it kind of can, it really, even though it looks so difficult and so advanced, it's beginner friendly. Because Hannah, how many blankets have you made? Yeah, not that many. Not that many. Not that many. And when did you learn how to crochet? Yeah, probably just in the last year or two. Yeah. The last year. The last year that I've well, really been practicing, practicing and stuff. So, and, yeah. but what, yeah. I mean, really, she's pretty much a beginner. Yeah. And, so, and I will just say, yeah, once you get the first two rows of diamonds across, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to just kind of, I just would always go back and check and make sure that your berries line up, but yeah. um, it's easy so to keep pretty in the pattern. <laughs> I love it. Her inspiration came from anthropology-ish, yeah, or kind of that boho, kind of a lot of travel, tribal kind of look or whatever. Lately, so. and, this color. and then just this blush color that had been in a lot of really pretty baby nurseries and stuff we've been seeing on Pinterest. Yeah. So. Yeah, I see this color paired with like black and white even, and they use the blush for the girls mm -hmm. and then the mint for the boys, and it's yeah. just so beautiful. Yeah, so, and then the tassels are also really easy. We'll show you a little um, tutorial. Um, they're just tied. You don't even have to do any crochet. Nope. So, um, finish it up, and then the naturally, because this is roving, they're naturally going to fray on you, and uh, mm -hmm. looks really great. Okay. Well, um... Okay, good. Uh, thank you, of course, for finding us, finding Daisy Farm Crafts and loving all the blankets that we make. And thank you for supporting us and um, always, you know, lots of prayers on our behalf. Yeah, and thank you. We're just always so appreciative. And uh, who knows, maybe one of these blankets. <laughs> who knows? Be the lucky blanket. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, okay. But we'll show you how to work the berry stitch and how to do those tassels. So, okay. See ya. Okay, let's get you started on uh, working this. A little practice swatch before you tackle that big uh, diamond blanket. I am such a proponent. I wish, I, if, number one crochet rule, please do a practice swatch. I can't tell you the amount of emails I get of ladies that are sad, not sad, but actually mad that they started the blanket with a hundred and some odd chains and have had to take the whole thing out. Take the time and do a practice swatch. So I chained 16, which gives me 15 single crochets across. I'm just showing you how to make one diamond and I think that that will help you with the rest of the blanket. That's all you really need to know. So the diamonds go on the eighth stitch. I have one, two, three, four, five. Here's number six. Here's seven, and here we go. Here's your first berry stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and just pull through one loop. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You will have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all five. That's it, your berry is done. Now immediately work right a single crochet right into the next stitch and that berry will pop out away from you over to the back of your work. That's exactly what you want it to do. Okay, now I'm going to finish 
seven single crochets to the end of the row and I am going to chain one and turn and work 15 single crochets across uh, to the other side and then we will work our bear, two berry stitches. Okay, so I will finish this up and you can push pause here and do the same and then when you come back we'll get to those other two berries. Okay, so I've got my one little berry right there. I've worked a row of single crochet back across and now my berries are going to be on stitch number six and stitch, wait, is that right? No, sorry, stitch number seven and stitch number nine. We're going to put one before. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's work a berry stitch right here. One, pull through one, pull through all five loops. Now you're gonna go ahead and single crochet in between because you want that berry to pop out. Now work another berry. Pull up a loop, go through one, yarn over, pull up a loop, now go through all five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Now single crochet. And here we are. I'm going to chain one and turn and work single crochet all the way back across. Okay, I'm working on my third set of berries, and this time the berries will be on stitch six, eight, and 10. So here we go. Let's single crochet five, two, three, four, and five. And now let's berry stitch. One, and pull through five, single crochet right there. Let's do another berry stitch. Single crochet and one last berry stitch. And single crochet to the end. That's the last row that we would need increase. When I go back across um, the next time, now we'll go back to putting the berries on stitch number seven and nine. Look at that, we're almost done. Okay, here we go, I'm going back and this is the row with the two berries. So it'll be stitch seven and nine. And really, I encourage you to go look at the graph that my daughter put together on the website um, and uh, um, take a screenshot, print it, whatever. It has, it will tell you, then you can get these numbers memorized. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, stitch number seven. Just until you get it memorized. And um, really, that only takes a few rows. And then you'll have this down no worries then you'll be able to work this while you're watching tv there is an alpaca hair right there this yarn is alpaca blend so sometimes there's little alpaca hairs in there okay All right, let's show you that these are, uh, did I forget to do one? Oh, um, I think I didn't do a very good berry stitch right there. Doesn't look quite the same. I'll go back and fix that. Okay, last row, it's gonna go right there. Okay, I went back and I fixed my berry. I was talking too much. Now this is my last row. I've worked my single crochet back across. I'm going to put my last little berry right on stitch number eight and um, that will complete the diamond. So one last little bit 
so you can see this. I'm working seven single crochets. Here's number three, number four, five, six, seven. Here we go, just in case. Yarn over, insert your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, just pull through one. Now yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and pull through all five loops. Immediately work a single crochet in the next space. To the end, and you will have seven single crochets on either side. And that, uh, that worked out. Okay, look at that. Okay, the full instructions then of how to get the other diamonds. It, it won't be tricky at all. The most important thing is that you just needed to know how to make these little berry stitches. Here is the completed blanket once again um, in this beautiful Peyton's wool roving. Uh, it's called blush, pale blush, and it's just this lovely, lovely peach color. I'm going to show you really quick, although it, it does demonstrate on our website how easy these tassels are. But um, basically, you're just folding, you're getting a, you know, put two together, make a length, length of string, fold them in half, and feed them through every other. And I would do this with a hook that I don't have handy. Let me see. I would actually just pull them through with a hook. And you've got this. Just pull it through. And then that's all you're going to do. Pull those tight. And they should not come off. Just pull them tight. This yarn is really pretty uh, hairy, I guess. I don't know. It's going to stick on each other. So you've got this. It just gives it that nice fringe. Those aren't going to come undone. And it's super simple, something easy you can do in front of the TV and finish off. Look at that. You don't even have to weave in your end down there. Okay, thank you as always for um, subscribing to my YouTube channel and visiting me here on daisyfarmcrafts.com. Thank you for finding me on Pinterest. I'm on Instagram. That's where I do a lot of, you'll see my works in progress. And we do a lot of sharing there. And I also have a Facebook page if that's uh, where you'd like to find me too. And I always share every pattern after the blanket is finished. Okay, bye.